Hello, everyone. Hello. Let's give everybody another round of applause. self-doubt about being able to even do this um, and I read the, I read the script, I read the script and, and, I, read the script and um, I, I, I like literally did not sleep that night um, I read it like at 11 and um, I think I went to bed at 5 the next morning because I was you know so flooded with uh, I said in a recent interview that I felt like I was tripping and I've never tripped before, but it felt like I was tripping because I was just overcome with this this imagery that Leland put to the like one face said the uh, ink to the pad, and um, I was just so so you know it, it, it sorry it felt like um, it felt like what I dreamt of in college coming through right like if I had a, a, a hundredth of the talent that Leland has, that's the story that I would write. Um, so, the universe. I think I think we were possessed by something bigger than us to make this story. And I'm very blessed that I found Leland, which is the main writer and it's my, my my creative partner, who who I was able to convince to just go and like develop this story with me. And and everything else was just miracle after miracle coming together. But but we knew we just had to show up and and a lot of things happen. It's, I feel like it's one of those things that just fell from the sky. I think before I answer, I just want to acknowledge the massive number of people in the room who worked on the film. So I would love for everyone to see that. We have a lot of actors. Yeah. Yeah. We really owe this film to, uh, to everyone who, who worked on this, so thank you so much. Um, in terms of what we what brought me to the project, I mean, Huangfei and I have a production company together. We've been working on things for some time. It's really, for me, very much on the side. Um, I do separately have a full-time job. But um, yeah, I mean, we started developing this project from initially my childhood bedroom in Florida. Um, and it just kind of developed really quickly and it grew into this massive thing that we're all very, very privileged to be a part of. Thank you everyone for being here. Um, what drove me to the project is just to make beautiful things, you know, and like everybody has said, you know, the script, it was amazing. Before we landed into the script, there was a few scripts before and this one was just cut us by you know by storm 
uh, we find ourselves in the middle of a pandemic with a lot of energy to spend and we capitalize on that you know and here there's the product you know everybody that is in the product in the project it was very super passionate and gave everything to this project and you can see it in the big screen now you know um, what can I say amazing people that became family at the end of the day so thank you all you know thank you that we're part of that we give it with us and you know feels amazing and out of words <laughs> characters they are very different but I also feel like as individuals they really do jump off at, from the very beginning it's very unique and you know, very captivating so I'm curious mainly for Sarah and Matthew was, was there anything about developing these characters that were that particularly challenging as you were working through you know who they are what they wanted and their you know, coming together how to change them um yeah a couple a couple of challenges um you know, I I feel very blessed. Um, blessed is a weird word these days, but I feel very <laughs> deeply fortunate um, to you know have a really warm circle of friends and family uh, who have believed in me for a very long time. Um, and uh, Peter did not have that, um, and so I was very you know I was concerned uh, that I was not going to be able to access that type of isolation, um, in, inner isolation. Um, but, uh, you know, the thing that helped was Sarah, uh, as you say on screen, she's, she's magnificent. And when you have a scene partner that you can trust uh, to the nth degree, um, you know, it makes everything uh, easier. Um, so. Uh, I've been kind of going through an identity crisis for a little while. Um, so <laughs> I, I recently retired from 26 years of professional ballet um, and jumped into acting. And so uh, this was a good decision. Yeah, good decision. Good decision. Um, I, I feel like I was kind of using that to. Um, go on her journey a little bit because she's super struggling with um, meaning and having this kind of crisis of um, what life is supposed to mean on the big scale. Um, so I just, yeah, I, I actually felt closer to her than any other character I've ever played and I played a professional ballet dancer. So <laughs> yeah, it felt amazing to be able to play her. Thank you. And there are these scenes throughout, these kind of like reality bending, you know, fantastical scenes. And I do want to ask, uh, you know, this time you got a question for the three of you, but what, how did you go about figuring out how that would look as opposed to the rest of the film and kind of from a visual standpoint? So, we have a very good cinematographer, and even though we were making a small movie with budget, we all were making the biggest movie in the world from our heart. And I think Camo and I spent many days working on developing a language. So for example, the entire movie, or 95% of the movie show, shot handheld, so that we could feel we were in the car with them, that we were in the journey going through with them. But, but at the same time, we decided to shoot it, it with an, amor an amorphic lenses to create a little bit of that dreamlike quality we decided to shoot at 4.30 in the morning and wake up at 2, 2 a.m. just so that we could get the, the right quality of lighting. And, and we, we really carved a lot of the scenes and like the tone of the scenes around the, scene, the, the lighting and, and we chased it. So we, we really wanted to make sure that we could access those magic hours in and, and the right times and, and, and obviously edit them in the right place. But I, but I think even the dream sequences, we, we wanted to shoot them very grounded so that they felt almost as if they were part of the normal reality and, and it was, wasn't conflicting with, with the rest of the, the story. And then, and then obviously throughout, you would discover that it was, we were in Peter's head or, or something like that. Got it. 
and then, well, this one is for anyone, and that is, was there a particular scene that was you know, fun or maybe particularly difficult to shoot that you want to share with the folks that just saw it? <laughs> Each 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 scene, you know, there are obviously there are a couple of bigger moments in the film, and um, I, you know, I mentioned trust in the last answer, but I kind of have to bring it back because it's kind of the, it's been the big word for me personally over this process. Is I'll give you like a, I can give you like a, a an, ex an example that hopefully will illuminate how I feel about that answer and, and this team. Uh, the diner scene um, was shot on the first day. Um, a very challenging scene emotionally, and um, uh, we were, yeah, I don't know, it was like nine or ten takes in, and I was feeling particularly personally frustrated. Uh, I knew where I wanted Peter to go, and I wasn't accessing that, and I knew how critical that, that moment, that crack in Peter's character was. And uh, Juan Fei, um, who I had met only two weeks prior, but we had you know, developed such a level of trust like trust in each other, he came over to me and he whispered in my ear and he said, the next take I want you to say uh, that you're balding. <laughs> and, you know, he knew that that's, that was like a, personally, like a, a hot spot, right? And so um, a director and an actor that hadn't developed that level of emotional trust and, and bonding, um, you know, that, that moment probably wouldn't have happened. And then the next take is the take that, you know, that is in the film. And so trust, and that's just one example, but there's countless with Sarah as well, but trust um, that the people who are shooting and the people who are in the scene with you have you. You know, I, I was thinking today, it's like acting is like um, skydiving. And the people that you're with that's the parachute, right? That's the parachute that helps you steer uh, this crazy fall that you're doing uh, on screen. And I, you know, again, I'm very lucky to, it was very challenging, but it made it a lot easier when you have uh, these, these filmmakers and, and these scene partners. You know, it's, it, makes, it literally makes all the difference, I, in my opinion. Thank you. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, throughout it, we know it's a lot open about you know, feelings and all sorts of things, but we do see a glimpse of, you know, Peter's life right before the very end. And we don't really know the detail, but we see that it's very different than the character we met at the beginning of this movie. And so I guess my question is, how do you think this journey that was very much about something that she wanted to do? has impacted and changed him, but of course the film, anyway. You mean when you're lonely and isolated and you feel like you have nobody and it, it, it can just take anyone to pull you out of that kind of mentality and I, I feel like as annoying as she was in the beginning, she has just a different energy than he was experiencing in his day to day and you know, eventually, her charm wins him over. <laughs> eventually. In real life, it took an hour, but... It took 10 seconds for me. <laughs> and then, you know, I mean, does anybody else have a different take on it? Well, I... I think <laughs> all right, and <laughs> all right. So, so I think, yeah. I mean, it, it is it is a challenging film because we wanted to make sure that, like, we knew he wasn't likable. We know his character was mean. He was in really pretty much a piece of shit, and he hated everyone. <laughs> we knew that. We knew that from the beginning. Yeah. But but we know we know his pain. We know we know he's feeling pain, and we hope, and we didn't want to like try to make a perfect movie in the sense of like, oh, this is how a character should be. But I think 
it comes through the his pain and then understanding where it's coming from and then it also comes from like I mean it's kind of like an, an exercise if you get in a car with somebody who has a different opinion than you eventually if you're open enough you're gonna be able to understand a little bit more about that other person and accept them a little bit more and that's kind of like like what it was so important to make sure that these characters that they, that it worked that they had chemistry that we could like pinch each other and and I feel um, that that was very challenging to do um, I don't know if I'm going in a row. I don't know if I'm answering your question, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, one, one thing I want to just piggyback on that, you mentioned that it was challenging, or that it was challenging, is that I, you know, I think, uh, I, you know, I personally, like, am very conscious of, like, being liked, right? I, as, as Matthew, like, it's, it's, it's you know, kind of been a survival mechanism in my life as a little person, and um, that probably was the biggest challenge, which was what Juan K was just touching on is, uh, Peter is not likable, you know. Like, I mean, if, if you meet this guy, um, you know, you don't want to. You don't want to go to a bar with him <laughs> and, and get a drink. And I think Juan Fei, the day after day after day, he was saying Peter is a piece of shit. Right? Just <laughs> drilling it in my mind. <laughs> and, uh, and and I and, and actually, to be quite frank, you know, I had allowed again going back to trust. I allowed myself to be really I let to feel what it would be like to be unlikable. And, and really, it was freeing. It was really freeing because when you take all Sometimes these too much. <laughs> when you take when you take all these filters off of like how do I look or how do I what do I say it's like fuck and and, and it was delicious. <laughs> No, and I, and I was gonna say, but then that's what makes the story interesting, right? If if we if he can win our heart eventually down the road, and we can truly understand where he's coming from, that that is kind of like an exercise on, on love and empathy and acceptance, and and really understanding that we, I mean, everybody's going through not not as like the same not the same pain, but like like we understand like life is not easy, and and Peter, and I think his performance is really what grounds this story, and and Sarah's performance, and it's. I gotta give all the credit to them because we took a massive risk at telling this story and I think if it wasn't because of them, like giving absolutely everything and trying to like really focus on that story and I can understand where the character was and how the character was changing and evolving and and we had a metaphor of like a, li a lighthouse that Peter is the brightest, most beautiful lighthouse in the most beautiful bay but he has no electricity and he kind of like Throughout the story, he finds a little bit of electricity, and then and then that's kind of what propels the story. And in its description, you know, it being kind of like a platonic love story, I think we do get a lot of romantic love stories out in the world, and this is different in that regard. So, like, my question is, was that part of the appeal? Was the need to add that to the number of stories that are out there that surround, you know, different types of love outside of like romantic love stories? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> it's a it's a good question. Um, I think that love. Um, I mean, what is love? You know, it's. It's romantic, it's platonic. Nice. I don't want to just like fish out for an answer. I, I think love, you know, what interests me when I watch a film or when I watch theater is do I feel like love is at stake? You know? Like, is there something that I'm watching that, that, the glass will shatter if someone on stage or on screen goes home and doesn't feel loved. That's the stories that get me. And whether it's romantic or platonic, or that, I mean, that's like so side dish to me. Um, so, as a little person, I'd be interested as my career grows to tackle what a romantic relationship would look like on screen and to tackle that relatively undiscovered territory, but in terms of like cinema or genre, you know, the type of love doesn't really 
I'm available. <laughs> Want to make another movie? <laughs> Brent was Brent. <laughs> um, but just to add, uh, in such a kind of weird time that we're living in with phones and kind of disconnect because of different beliefs or fighting over COVID stuff and, you know, sometimes friend love um, feels kind of lost right now. Um, and so showing to people not in lost in all of that and just going on the journey with the mask in the car, figuring it out and finding um, a love in each other regardless of where they came from is kind of novel in, in this moment. So I think it's beautiful. One well, last thing is, I actually read not too long ago that one in seven people have to have no friends, like in the US, and mm -hmm. alone. Like and they feel lonely, and I and I thought I thought that was very interesting. So so in many ways, I think just exploring friendship is is fascinating, and it, and it's unexplored. And then I mean, just wanted to remind everyone before I ask this next question, I'm seeing the front of my eye, to um, not forget this old, this movie, the Bernardi's Award. So before you head out of the theater. Um, uh, happy. Don't forget to happy. Yeah. 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 Great product to work for all of you. So, what is next for all of you? We want to put it online and let folks know. If, if you want to start. I'm available. <laughs> and I'm very skilled at a lot of different things. I, I don't do what Winona does, but <laughs> I am available. <laughs> well, um, uh, for the past few years, I've been really, really fortunate to be on a show called New Amsterdam on NBC. <laughs> Actually, there's a couple of, of uh, cast members of the show and, and uh, crew. Um, uh, I, as much as I, you know, I love this crew, but I fell in love with new, the New Amsterdam crew. They're they are, uh, um, rare, rare birds in Peter's words. And um, we love you too, Matthew. I love Woo! you. Too. Tyler from New Amsterdam, my friends. Um, thank you, Tyler. Um, uh, so, so we 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 we're coming. Unfortunately, we're coming down on the end of the uh, 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 series, but it's it's been a blast, and I think we wrap in early December. So I have a couple more episodes of that, and then I'll turn the calendar and you know see what happens with with this journey and, and uh, what else. Yeah, he's available. <laughs> in short. <laughs> Um, I have another feature film in Spanish that I want to shoot. Um, I'm from Colombia, so I want to film it back home. It's it's a story about two siblings, very much unlike the Aguirre like German. It's, it's kind of similar thematically. It's about outsiders and trying to find uh, what happened to their mom, and and like their mom disappears one day and it becomes kind of a coming of age through the perspective of kids. Very much like Devil's Backbone or Pan's Labyrinth, kind of like that little bit of that inspiration. Mm -hmm. Very similar language visually to this, but uh, I'm also for uh, I'm also available for a hire. <laughs> we, we are available as a group as well. <laughs> I also I also don't have an agent, so you can just email me. <laughs> you can find my number and my website. My Instagram, uh, but no, I, 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 we are developing another English-speaking script, Leland and I, and we have roles for both of them because I really want to like include this very narrative. Like, they're amazing. So, hopefully, you'll get to get that made soon. I think what's next for us is probably an existential question for everyone in the audience as well. I think, I hope. Um, I hope I'm not alone in that sense. Um, well, as I said, Mompa and I do have a production company together, so the hope is that as he directs these new features, which are extremely exciting, 
um, that I am along for the ride as well. I plan to produce those in, in any capacity that I can. Um, I'm, I guess, kind of available for hire as well. <laughs> Time jobs, um, but yeah, I, I have. Well, as you know, Peter is unemployed, so you can you can see where he comes from. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I've been working through what is it that I really want to do with the rest of my life as I hit some some year thresholds. Uh, my birthday is coming up, so it's always a nice thing. Yeah. Um, Thirty. <laughs> didn't have to tell him how old. But yeah, I mean, we'll see. I think for me, it is one day at a time. Well, I'm always looking. I'm always looking for great scripts, you know, <laughs> to produce the rice bowl. Uh, uh, I'm reading two amazing scripts that is also. Hopefully, getting the ball rolling probably at the beginning of the next year. But yeah, if you have a great script or anything, and I'm always down to read it. and cast of this movie. Let's give everyone a round of applause. Of the Jeep of Alien Head and also the logo of the film. Um, and the pink Jeep is outside. You might have seen as you as you were looking in. So please, we are a super small film. We're looking for distribution. So take pictures with the with the Jeep, post it on Instagram, tag us everywhere, and let's get the word out. Just, I mean, this movie, it's the, everybody who came, thank you so much, and the crew. We have our guy for John Bush, who we, you would have been positive with him. Like, and it's a team, it's teamwork. And, and, and thank you for, for the entire cast and crew for just believing in us and like coming along. And it was really hard, but it, it was like, yeah, I'm just incredibly thankful. And, and, and thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Drink with us at the bar if you guys want to, you know, find out more details. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh.